day, good day. How you going? What do you know? He'll strike a light. Good day, good day. And how you going? Just say good day, good day, good day, and you'll be right. Now we come to the portion of the service before we do our Bible study that we address some end times news and trends that is happening around the world as it relates to Bible prophecy. And this, by the way, is update number 100. Uh, It's amazing how fast time has gone by. Uh, The first one we did was July 6th, uh, 2014. And uh, a lot has taken place. It's been an amazing journey uh, when we did it two years ago. Um, there's quite a few news events happening, but now it's like hundreds of things are happening on a daily, weekly basis. It's hard to keep up. And this is one of the reasons why we started to do a midweek update as well, because I'm not going to put it all into a Sunday morning. My main focus on Sunday morning is to just give you a snapshot, but more importantly, the teaching of God's word. That is the most important thing that we could ever do. But I do want to give you some highlights on what's happening around the world. And uh, we do want to thank all our subscribers around the world and the online church for joining with us and connecting with us and uh, all the comments that they've uh, posted there, uh, positive and negative, (laughs) it comes with the territory. And uh, and for those who have sent their prayer requests in, we do pray for uh, those requests. Now on to the update, the the big news item this week, as many of you know, when we talked about it uh, before service, was the vote from the UK to leave the European Union. So this is a major um, um, news that is uh, going to rock uh, the world for, for months and years to come. Uh, and what this means is that the British and the European uh, leaders are going to negotiate the terms of this particular exit that's going to happen and departure. And... Um, It's going to affect the economy, it's going to affect immigration policy, and a whole uh, wide range of other issues. Um, The process, it could take years, but it also, what they're wanting to do is make it happen quickly, which will be a a real chaotic process. Um, This particular vote that took place was not a legal binding uh, issue. Um, It it can be blocked theoretically and overturned, as the, <clears throat> what they have to do is they uh, um, have to send in a, 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 uh, a negotiate with the treaty. So there has to be an official appeal from the government itself, not just from the people. But to, it would be a political suicide uh, to go against the will of the people as expressed in the referendum. And of course, we already saw David Cameron, uh, who was for keeping Britain in the European Union as long as long and quite a few other world leaders. I know Obama was for it. Um, So this was definitely a slap in both of their faces. Uh, But he's resigned, and that will take place in October. Um, So it's going to be interesting. But there is an Article 50, and there's not a lot that says in this particular article of the Treaty of the European Union that establishes the procedure of a member uh, state to withdraw from the Union. No country has withdrawn. So this is the first of its kind uh, for it to happen. But it requires the member of state to notify the European Union uh, to withdraw and obliges the uh, European Union to then negotiate the withdrawal agreement uh, with the state. So this coming week, there's already going to be this uh, uh, kind of summit uh, where they're going to meet on July or June 28th and 29th uh, to negotiate and talk through this particular exit. And again, uh, once Britain invokes this Article 50, uh, it will have at least a two-year window <clears throat> to which negotiate a new treaty which places uh, the different terms on the European membership. And um, so it's an interesting situation that's happening, uh, that's going on there. Um, but the best scenario for the uh, people of Britain, uh, that they're able to negotiate access to the European market. So it's a huge economic issue that is going to take place. Um, Norway, by the way, is not a member of the EU, but it has already uh, agreed to abide by a number of the European Union rules in exchange for favorable European uh, common market. So, so there's certain countries that have tapped into that. But this will also be a big visa issue, as we mentioned, in immigration. Currently, there's uh, 1.2 million uh, Brits living in other countries throughout uh, Europe. Uh, and uh, 3 million non-British European nationals that are living in Britain. Um, And thanks to the European uh, rules, 
Uh, they were able to move and across the English Channel with minimal paperwork. So this is one of the blessings that they had of the EU is that you can go to country to country without a lot of paperwork or visas and that whole process. Um, so this will change that profoundly. It could also mean that people moving to or from uh, Britain will need to worry about more uh, different uh, rules of from the passport to the um, residency rules. It could mean that some of the... Um, uh, British uh, immigrants uh, may lose their right to continue to live and work in the UK as well. So it's a, a major um, shockwave around the world as well. Uh, other countries, according to the Express uh, News report, um, is also catching wave among many other countries that are contemplating a whole other referendum to get out. Uh, Italy, France, Netherlands, and Denmark are all calling for this as well. So there's, there's going to be a lot of unsettledness here. So it's going to be interesting how this all plays itself out. Just give it some time. Um, But there's a lot of moving parts here. There's a lot of chaos that's happening. And um, it's going to get a whole lot worse, you know. So we need to understand it's not going to get any better. It's going to get a lot more chaotic, which will set the stage, I believe, for the eventual Antichrist to rise on and uh, set up uh, his one world government. And things are putting into place like that. I do believe that the Antichrist is already on the scene, not to say he's in a position where he's going to assume that he's behind the scenes, working a lot of deals and, um, you know, working through the, the cracks and do what he needs to do to put more things in motion. And uh, there's a lot of speculation who this individual is. Uh, there will be a lot of people who will be shocked uh, when they see it. And some will say, I knew it all along. You know, it was Obama. <laughs> By the way, if you're to type in Antichrist, you know, Obama's name comes up the most, you know. So anyway, he could be it, but uh, either way, uh, it's, we're not here to look for the Antichrist. We're here to look to Jesus Christ. So um, on a, an economic issue with this whole um, Brit exit, um, the global markets lose $2.1 trillion uh, the other day uh, with the stock markets that were going on. So they're pulling out. It wiped $2.1 trillion from the global equity markets on Friday as trade uh, uh, panicked in the face of the new threat of the global economy. This will create a lot of shock waves and a lot of ripple effect. And we even not feel it overnight, uh, but it's going to affect our currency, the dollar against the the pound and and against the uh, European Union. So it's going to have this uh, major effect worldwide. Uh, But like we said, you're not going to necessarily feel it overnight, but there will have this uh, ripple effect that will happen, which will eventually set up a new uh, government uh, uh, issue where they'll have a one world currency. And again, they're getting things ready for the the microchip to be planted in people. So that way you can do away from a cashless society, away from even uh, a credit card. It will be something that will be implanted in people's um, hands and foreheads. On a separate issue, another big item that happened this last week on Thursday, the Supreme Court uh, blocks Obama's uh, immigration plan. This report came out on Thursday out of the Fox News. Uh, the executive order actions uh, in a tie decision that delivered to win states to challenge this plan. So what happened was a 4-4 vote because uh, they don't have nine people on the Supreme Court because of the murder of Justice Scalia. Um, and uh, what, what's interesting is the, um, what's kind of going on through behind the scenes here is there's a, a, a lot of executive abuses that have taken place. And of course, the Constitution went out the window once Obama came in. So the Constitution's very clear that the president is not permitted to write laws, Congresses, which brings up a whole other issue. The big issue a, a year ago from today was the ruling of the same-sex marriage. The Supreme Court and the President do not write laws, but somehow it's now a law amongst the the United States to uh, embrace homosexuality and the same-sex marriage, So, which is a whole other subject there. But Obama said in this particular decision, uh, further <clears throat> takes us further from the country that we aspire to be. So again, just his liberal policies, and again, as uh, Clinton has been going around the... Uh, country saying they want a borderless, you know, country, which just allows anyone to come in. So there's no point in having police or army or 
border control or immigration, you know, if you're going to open up the doors uh, for all this to take place, which is going to create a whole uh, nightmare. But he stressed the uh, earlier changes of his administration to make immigration policy are not affected, but the acknowledge that most of the recent 2014 changes cannot go forward and additionally executive actions are unlikely. So what uh, this 4-4 uh, vote um, um, leaves in place is that it's the ruling of the lower court. Um, so in this case, the federal uh, appeals in the court in New Orleans uh, said that Obama's administration lacked the authority to shield up uh, 4 million uh, immigration from deportation and make the eligible for work permits without approval from Congress. Uh, so the immigration case, again, is going to be a, a major issue in this next coming election. And uh, it, it's a big issue around the world. And how do you handle uh, the refugees to the immigration and the policies there? And then lastly, on a persecution and more on a moral issue as well, the Democrats, which when we say Democrats here in Australia, it's the Labor Party, uh, same thing, same philosophy, same platform. The Democrats, the LGBT activists, sinister plan to crack down on Christian schools. So what is going to take place in California, where this report out of the Fox News on Thursday came up, is going to affect not only throughout the U.S., but it's going to affect here in Australia with a lot of the Christian private schools that is going on. But here's the report. In California, Democrats have their way, if they were to. <clears throat> the Christian colleges and university will no longer be allowed to require students to attend chapel services or require them to profess a relationship with Jesus Christ, which is one of those rules. In order to get into the school, you have to be a born-again Christian. Here's the statement of faith, right? Uh, the Senate Bill 1146 uh, would close the loophole to make lawmakers allow Christian universities to uh, to discriminate against students based on their gender identity, uh, gender expression, or sexual orientation. All students deserve to feel safe in institution of higher education, regardless of whether they're private or public, uh, said the Senator Ricardo Lara, uh, who's the author of this particular uh, legislation. California has established strong uh, protections for the LGBT community, and private universities should not be able to use faith as an ex uh, excuse for discrimination and avoiding complying with state laws. So this is where the government's coming in. And this is why there's a lot of schools that are non-accredited because they don't want the government coming in to push their way around or say, well, you have to hire a homosexual uh, as part of your staff. Even if it's a Christian Bible college or a Christian university, you have to abide what the state says. So this is uh, what this whole um, um, law is about, what they're trying to push. So it discriminates against religious colleges and, um, and this is why a lot of the um, university, Christian universities and colleges are paying attention because this will uh, drive them out of existence if it goes on. Uh, the president of the Sacramento Base University, it's a Christian university that they had there uh, that was talking about this legislation and how chilling it was. But the passage of this bill would destroy the foundation upon which this university... And again, there's a lot that will go under the same category. Systematically discriminating against religious institutions and preventing students to access and choice to Christian higher education is a bad policy and will leave a negative effect in the state of California, which will eventually affect all the other states around the, the country as well. And also other countries around the world that do have Christian-based universities will also be affected by them or other schools and um, um, secondary schools as well. So if the loophole is closed, it would have a devastating impact upon faith-based institutions. So this is why it is such a, a, a major issue. Uh, it hasn't been passed yet. Hopefully it doesn't get passed. Uh, but this is something we need to pay attention to because the schools here are going along with the safe, safe school system, which is just a travesty of what's taking place because it's allowing government to brainwash uh, the children with the sexual education and indoctrination of the LGBT whole movement. So the attacks, the persecution on Christianity and Christian schools, it's going to get a lot, lot worse and a lot tougher. So we need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for protection and that the enemy's plans uh, that would be stopped in situations like this. We also, again, need to be praying because the election is here on, on Saturday. Uh, and so we can have a whole change of government, uh, which would be kind of scary at the same time. Um, but uh, we have quite a few uh, Christian candidates that could be elected into office. 
Uh, and so that's kind of our prayers to, um, you know, to make our voice known. Not, don't do a donkey vote. Um, and so this is a crucial election. And as Christians, it is imperative that when we vote, we do so according to biblical beliefs. Uh, and again, to grasp the fact, again, government can't save us, only God can save us. Well, the only hope for any country is Jesus Christ. And, uh, but there is a mistake that a lot of people make, that thinking that the, the government's uh, going to fix everything, uh, they're going to defend or advance or even guard biblical Christianity, and, and they're not. Uh, this is why it's so important to get some Christian elected officials in there to make the, the right uh, choice. But where we have a voice, we can elect uh, our officials and our leaders. And uh, we do so by the right of voting. And again, here it's compulsory. In other countries around the world, it is not compulsory, uh, which is a shame. Everyone should want to vote if you can vote, if it's physically possible to make your voice heard. So one of the biggest issues, again, I think we face around the world uh, and here in Australia is where you see people and politicians calling good evil and evil good. So they have this twisted mindset. And you see this all the time with the policies and the new laws that they're trying to uh, be passed and put in place. So we need to stand up for righteousness and truth. Amen? And that concludes today's update.